you see also the volumes of Tether compared to the rest of stable coins, that they are insanely higher. They are even 10 times higher in, in, on, on a bad day. This is Paolo Arduino, the CTO of Tether, the world's largest stablecoin issuer. Stablecoins, whose value is backed by real-world assets, are among the fastest growing cryptocurrencies. USDC, the second largest stablecoin, has been gaining market share and could threaten soon Tether's dominance. Uh, USDC is not more regulated. If a narrative is provided by the competition, does not me make it true. In this video, we talk about Tether's key role in spreading crypto adoption. We also discuss how Tether plans to keep its leading position in an increasingly competitive stablecoin market. I'm Giovanni, your host, and this is a Cointelegraph interview. So Paolo, let's talk about Plan B. Tether recently entered a partnership with the Swiss city of Lugano in order to make Bitcoin, Tether and the local stablecoin Luga de facto legal tender in the city. So can you tell us a bit more about the project and what is the current status of it? So we are used to live in an um, industry that is the crypto industry that is uh, really often abstract. Uh, we wanted as Tether and Bitfinex as a group of companies, we wanted to provide um, a first use case of a clear adoption of uh, three of the, well, two of the most used uh, cryptocurrencies in the world, Bitcoin and Tether, and then, of course, the local uh, stablecoin created by the city of Lugano. We wanted to show how using these three um, cryptos, the citizens could extremely benefit from, first of all, um, uh, an improvement in t in terms of uh, accessibility of uh, to financial services, an improvement in terms of reduction of transaction fees. We know that uh, now the majority of payments are done through credit cards, and then they, these credit cards have a variable fee from three to five percent. Uh, using stable coins, that fee could remain in the pockets of either the customer of the merchant or the merchant itself. Um, so we wanted to actually build in an ecosystem, in a contained environment, because Lugano has 70,000 inhabitants, so it's a, a fairly contained environment. So we wanted to start from something we could, in a way, control, that we could oversee, um, to ensure that uh, uh, the adoption of these crypt three cryptocurrencies would happen in the most organic way, but with the highest quality. And so what can citizens of Lugano concretely do with cryptocurrency now? So the city is, uh, so the administration of the city is working to um, allow the citizens to pay, uh, citizens and tourists, so the citizens to pay uh, taxes and all the city services in, uh, the, and, um, in, in Luga, Tether and Bitcoin. And of course, all the tourists that come and use the city services in still in the three, the three currencies. Of course, it will take a you know, few weeks or a few months anyway, in order to have all these um, new payment systems integrated into the um, city accounting. The second step is now, nowadays there are already 200 uh, merchants that are uh, supporting uh, Luga stablecoin and uh, uh, more than 100 that are also supporting Bitcoin payments already. So what uh, will happen in the next months, and uh, we are already well ahead in um, uh, working with uh, different partners to uh, provide, to create a simple uh, offering for the merchants of the city to have a new point of sale system and uh, that will accept both uh, credit and debit cards, but also crypto payments um, in the three currencies that we mentioned, Bitcoin, Tether and Luga stablecoin. This initiative reminds me of what happened in El Salvador last year, where Bitcoin was uh, accepted, was adopted as legal tender by law. So that law was a bit controversial because essentially all merchants in the country were forced to accept Bitcoin if they were offered Bitcoin as a mean of payment. As far as I understand, in Lugano, it works differently. No, it is not. So as you, as you said, there is, a, there, there is a difference. This is in Lugano, there is a de facto, uh, is de facto legal tender in the sense that the city will support, so all the administration uh, will support these three uh, cryptocurrencies for all the city services and will 
help the education of the um, citizens and merchants to understand why it's going to be extremely beneficial for them and in a way a no-brainer to uh, adopt uh, Bitcoin uh, and Tether and Luga as payment systems. I believe that it's important to not force this thing through uh, on, on all the merchants. It's important that people have the choice and that they have the freedom of choice. The difference in the, um, between Lugano and El Salvador is actually the, the, um, the population and the, the base wealth, right? Lugano is a rich city in Switzerland that is one of the richest countries, not, if not the rich, richest country in the world. While El Salvador is a country in, uh, in, in Latin America that is not as rich, and there is a percentage of unbanked that is uh, extremely high. So Bitcoin for El Salvador is a primary, is part of a primary infrastructure and financial infrastructure. While in Lugano is optional, but is a benefit um, that could ben benefit that for merchants that will potentially make more business. And that is completely fine, right? Different places, different use cases. Bitcoin is for everyone. So let's talk about Tether now. USDT is currently the world's largest stablecoin. However, USDC, Tether's main competitor, is quickly gaining market share. So the market cap of USDC stood at around $6 billion over a year ago, while today it stands at around $51 billion. And according to Arcane Research, USDC could overtake Tether as the largest stablecoin in June if it continues growing at the same rate. So what do you think is the reason behind USDC's impressive growth and uh, what is Tether's plan in order to maintain its dominance in the stablecoin market? So, um, first of all, um, you know, I have read the research, but, you know, things change. Look at what happened the last 30 days. Tether grew 3.2%, 3, 3 USDC uh, dropped 2.8%, something like that. So, one month ago, the discrepancy between Tether and USDC, Tether, USDT, and USDC was um, 26 billion. Nowadays, is uh, 31 billion. So actually, in the last 30 days, Tether regained um, momentum, and um, <clears throat> you can see this. Uh, the reason I believe that uh, Tether is growing so fast is that Tether is really perceived as an instrument of freedom, a solution, a tool that help uh, everyone. It's not a tool built for the banks. It's not a tool made for Wall Street. It's a tool that um, everyone, the last person can use, not the, is not made for the rich, but is made for the unbanked. It's made for a people that have actually uh, actual problems to access uh, financial services. So, you know, again, we as Tether, we don't want to, we are not interested in going public. We are doing this because we believe that is uh, going to be beneficial for billions of people. That is why if you see also the volumes of Tether compared to the rest of stable coins, that they are insanely higher. They are even 10 times higher in, in, on, on a bad day. So it could be, they are usually much higher uh, than 10 times. So. We, you know, we, we, I, I personally don't care if uh, we get, um, uh, we become the second biggest stable coins. I don't have that sense of pride in myself, but I believe that Tether will continue to thrive over, you know, the next years, just because it's, use, it's, use, it's uh, useful, it's trusted, and, uh, you know, it's, it's just proven by the use of people. So it must be said that USDC has built a reputation for being quite friendly with the US regulators, while Tether has rather a patchy history when it comes to the transparency of its reserves. So do you think that's, that might be the reason why people are increasingly turning to USDC, because they feel more protected? No, I, I, don't, I really don't not saying that. So on, <laughs> sorry, but on many fronts, I believe that uh, there is a big misconception here. Uh, first of all, uh, USDC is not more regulated. We are regulated in the same way. We are both registered Vincent. Uh, we worked with um, uh, law enforcement in the, and I believe in the same way. At least we know that the Tether is uh, complying and working really well with uh, 
with law enforcement and regulators across the world. We have been just named by Fitch, that is a US company, as the most transparent stablecoin. So our reports are considered more transparent, more transparent than the other competitors. And why is that? Is because starting from January 2021, we started providing um, the attestation, the quarterly attestations that also contain a breakdown of reserves. We didn't have fear. We provided more information immediately to all our users. We provided that information that contained the breakdown reserves and also contained the famous commercial papers. And then people start asking about the commercial papers. And then we provided the breakdown of the ratings of the commercial paper. The ratings are provided by, so we take the lowest rating among Fitch, Moody's, and the Southern Poor's. And the vast majority of the commercial paper turned to be A2 or better. That is basically at the same level of the treasuries, uh, US treasuries. And then people still had questions. So we also decided to reduce the allocation of commercial papers to increase the treasury allocation. All that said and demonstrated publicly. So I believe that, uh, of course, there is an interesting narrative from the competition, but that, is, that does not mean that the, if a narrative is provided by the competition does not mean, make it true. I believe that we have demonstrated our transparency we, it has been also suggested that uh, um, our trans uh, transparency was higher than the competition also by a big organization like Fitch. So I think that uh, we as data in terms of transparency, we're in a really good shape. So now let's talk about CBDCs or central bank digital currencies. We are seeing that all over the world governments are developing this new technology that will allow basically national currencies to run on, block on the blockchain and work in a similar way as stable coins do now. So when this new technology will be available to the masses, what will be the relevance for privately issued stable coins such as Tether? I believe that um, they will coexist with the uh, privately issued stable coins like that or will uh, coexist with the CBDCs. Um, the reason is that um, is um, the, the standard, the tra traditional banking industry is relying on really outdated technology. So um, they are relying on technology that was built 30 years ago, even more, is probably even older. Um, they are still using like languages like COBOL and, and other stuff, right? The cost of maintaining that full infrastructure is enormous. So actually imagine if you could use a blockchain to settle all the transactions across all the bank banks in a region. The cost of maintenance will go down uh, by many orders of magnitude. The reason is because um, with blockchains, everyone is looking at the same number, at the same values, the same. So you can put all the transactions and um, all. Imagine if all the banks could run nodes, even on the private blockchain. The the um, the the saving in terms of maintenance and the stability and security are going to be huge. So that's why I believe that CBDCs are interesting. I believe that all, although I believe that so CBDCs and the way they will work, I believe that will just uh, replace the ACH or the SEPA or the SWIFT channels. So it's just a way to, another way to send wires with a different protocol. So when you are moving uh, money from one bank account to another, instead of using a SWIFT or a SEPA transfer, you will just use a blockchain transfer, a private blockchain transfer. And also, I believe that uh, it's, um, it's really hard to imagine a CDBC being issued on Ethereum, Solana, Tron, right? So that will be still the duty of privately issued stable coins to bring uh, the national currencies on, on, uh, on public blockchains. Right, but why do you think that people would care about that? Why do you think people would care on whether these digital currencies are running on Solana or on any other specific blockchain? I think that most people would just care about a system that works, that works well. Well, that's, that's a fair point, but I still believe that uh, having um, one of the things that excites people about the uh, public blockchains is the programmability. So you can build uh, more complex behaviors and uh, you know, games and uh, even you know, the now that we are in the game five, right? So there are games that could have a financial uh, aspect that will not likely run on a, on a privately uh, managed blockchain from, uh, from a government. But still, um, they will run on uh, on a 
public blockchain that uh, is auditable and, and by, by everyone and so on. And uh, so I believe that there are still important aspects for, private, uh, for pu uh, public uh, blockchains. That is the, you know, the possible, the, all the possible experimentations that you can do and the um, absolute um, ability of making money programmable. I hardly think that uh, a privately issued uh, or public, a privately maintained blockchain will have will be EBM compatible and will let you to do to 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 create uh, complex behaviors. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot, Paolo, for jumping on our show. It was a pleasure to have you with us. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time. It was a really pleasure to talk to you and, and meet you. That was Paolo Arduino, CTO at Bitfinex and Tether. I'm Giovanni, your host. See you next time.